A third of the European Union's electricity comes from nuclear energy, and surveys have shown that with more than 140 nuclear plants in the EU, people consider both the question of safety and dealing with radioactive waste to be a high priority. The industry has a good safety record, with each country responsible for its own standards. But there are no Europe-wide regulations, which is what the European Commission is now proposing. Lo que habría que preguntarse es por qué no lo hemos hecho antes. Si controlamos y establecemos reglas para garantizar la calidad de aguas de baño en todos los países de la Unión, parece también bastante razonable que establezcamos normas europeas que garanticen que en todos los países de la Unión se mantiene el más alto nivel de seguridad en las centrales nucleares. A partir de ahí, hasta ahora todos los países han venido llevando a cabo estas tareas con normas nacionales manteniendo muy altos niveles. Pero hay que recordar dos cosas. Una, que la Unión Europea se va a ampliar y van a llegar nuevos países con centrales nucleares también. Dos, que lo que se trata es no solo de establecer esos niveles para todos, sino además unos sistemas de controles cruzados que garantizan la transparencia para todos los ciudadanos de la Unión Europea y dan garantías, por lo tanto, más allá de las fronteras de ninguno de los países. There would be common safety standards based on International Atomic Energy Agency norms. Each country would still have its own independent nuclear authority. The key new element is that the EU would take on a watchdog role to monitor the safety checks. The whole issue of nuclear safety has been thrown into the spotlight by the prospect of the enlargement of the European Union next year. There'll then be 20 more reactors in the EU, some of which are older Soviet designs. But the experts say it's not about pointing the finger at the former Eastern Bloc states. L'élargissement a accéléré ces propositions pour une raison très simple, c'est que nous avions constaté qu'un certain nombre de centrales dans ces pays ne respectaient pas les normes de sûreté minima. Très exactement, nous avons demandé la fermeture de huit réacteurs. Cela ne veut pas dire que les centrales nucléaires de tous ces pays sont dangereuses. Nuclear safety costs money, particularly when it comes to decommissioning reactors at the end of their working life. For instance, the Ignalina nuclear plant in Lithuania, which was designed by Soviet engineers. It's the same type as the Chernobyl reactor, and today, as Lithuania prepares to join the EU, it's committed to close the plant down. But it will cost at least 1 billion euros to dismantle. Money that Lithuania alone can't afford. And it's been given considerable help from the EU. It's to avoid this sort of situation that the proposed directives would require nuclear operators to set up a decommissioning fund during a reactor's lifetime. For a, what is a normal sized nuclear reactor, it could cost anywhere between 100 million euros and a billion euros to decommission it. So you need to make sure that money is available, a large amount of money is available, and it's available over a long period of time. Otherwise, you can't decommission safely. Decommissioning is a massive job. This is the removal of the highly radioactive pressure vessel inside the nuclear reactor at Moll in Belgium. This is the first pressurized water reactor to be dismantled in Europe. It closed down in 1987 at the end of its 25-year lifespan. Work on decontamination is only now nearing an end. You have here the pump of the circuit primary of the reactor, which was the part probably the most contaminated of the reactor, and which was cleaned, what we call decontaminated, to a level that now permits us to be on the side, we could eat it in there. It will have taken 18 years and 125 million euros to completely dismantle the reactor. An indication of why a decommissioning fund is needed, a bit like planning a pension for retirement. Ce qu'on fait dans nos pays et qui est maintenant de plus en plus imposé même dans les pays de l'Est, c'est pendant la production, donc pendant l'opération de ces réacteurs, pour chaque kilowattheure d'électricité produit, on met quelques centimes euros ou quelques cents de euh, de l'argent local dans un compte séparé qui sera utilisé pour le démantèlement. The spent fuel from the reactor once kept here is now in a nearby interim storage center. Belgium, like every other EU country, still has no long-term solution for high-level radioactive waste. 
Surveys have shown that four out of five Europeans believe that we should deal with nuclear waste now, not leave it for our children. Protesters have made it clear that they don't want it transported long distances. The proposed EU nuclear legislation would include deadlines for every member state to find locations for disposal sites. The quantities of nuclear waste are not huge, equivalent to a wine glass per person in the EU each year. The vast majority is low-level, short-lived. It may be protective clothing or contaminated laboratory equipment. After 60 years, most of the radioactivity will be gone. Less than 10% is high-level waste, equivalent in amount to an ice cube per person per year. This is spent nuclear fuel or waste from reprocessing, which remains active for thousands of years.